Alright, so beside uh, the basic socket function that we learned before, okay, so networking uh, API use in C language, uh, that's, a, that's a socket, listen, bind, uh, uh, connect, kan? And then kita ada I.O. situ, read, write, uh, send, send to, uh, apa nama receive receive from and then kita follow by close kan ingat tak okey so ada line line socket function yang penting juga so ni dalam uh, dalam advanced socket function nampak tak okey clear the first socket Uh, yang akan kita pakai dalam uh, programming kita uh, ke API use get sock name okey untuk apa ni to get the socket name okey so yang ini uh, dalam uh, header sys socket.h right so dalam sys socket.h sana uh, show presenter so salah presenter view kanan screen pointer option nah laser option okey include sys socket h alright so dia punya uh, uh, api dia uh, int uh, dia adalah tinggi, kita kena masukkan dia sebagai integer okey get socket name contohnya int s equal to get socket name kan get sort name. Okey, parameter dalam dia ada 1 2 3. Okey. Ah yang pertama dah tentu soket kita. Ha, kan? Ah soket kita. Kalau kita bagi SD sama dengan soket apa-apa, so letak je SD. Ya. Yeah. Alright, and then yang kedua ada struct soket address. Okey, uh, restrict address. Okey, soket length. Yang ketiga parameter adalah restrict address underscore line. Okay. So get sort name function shall retrieve the locally bound name of the specified socket. So store this address in the socket address structure pointed to by the address argument. And store the length of the address in the object pointed to by address length argument. Kan? Okay. If the actual length of the address is greater uh, okay Uh, length of address uh, yang ni kalau the greater than the length of the supply socket address structure structure the store address shall be shortened so if the socket has not been bound to the local name the value store in the point object pointed to by address is unspecified okay so int ni akan return value sama ada kosong ataupun kalau ada ada negatif Negative one. Alright. So kosong ni sukses lah. Alright. So baca lah. Okay. Okay. Common-common error yang akan terdapat adalah uh, dia akan bagi uh, bad file descriptor dengan e -bet f. Okay. Ni dalam bentuk function. Kita kena tulis dalam uh, bukan. Ni option. Kalau huruf besar ni option lah. Uh, ataupun e not sock. The socket argument does not refer to Uh, socket error not socket nah, macam itulah uh, end of operation not supply kan supported protocol okay not supported protocol okay end of uh, operation okay uh, line line error uh, invalid Uh, kan invalid error invalid okey so dia akan shut down ataupun tak ada buffer resource tak cukup insufficient resource where helper in system to complete the function error no buffer kan second function yang kita boleh pakai sebenarnya get sort name adalah get peer name okey get peer name sama juga pakai include sys socket.h Okay, so to get name of connected peer socket. Okay, dia punya ni sama je. Uh, apa nama? Parameter ada tiga. Okay, socket, 
start at this name dengan socket length siapa ni length ok so get peer name return the number the name of the peer connected to the socket as the name length parameter should be initialized on indicate the amount of space pointed to by name so on return it contains the actual size of the name return in bytes the name is truncated if the buffer provided is too small so the return value on success zero is return error negative one sama juga okay error number error no is set appropriately okay dia punya error error dia option untuk error e bad file sama macam tadi uh, e fault e invalid no buffer e not connect and then e not sort kan the argument s is a file not a socket kalau salah ni Alright, tadi uh, get peer name sama Diulang balik Sekejap, sekejap get peer name Siapa nampak yang mana tak sama Sama kan, sama kan dia sepatutnya satu set, satu get. Okay, get sort name, get peer name. Ada dua. Alamak, ada dua. Tapi sama kan? Kan? Sama. Alright. And then shutdown. Untuk apa guna shutdown ni? Untuk end a communication with a socket. Kalau kita dah pakai close, nak pakai, kenapa nak pakai shutdown? Kenapa? Ada kat sini kan? Shutdown ends communication on socket descriptor S in one or both direction. Kalau close to one direction saja, Right. Shutdown dua-dua. Right. In, uh, dia integer juga. Okay. Kita langsung dua dan juga how. How kat sini lah. Letak kosong satu ataupun dua. Kosong does not allow any more receive. Satu does not allow any more send. Uh, two does not allow any more send or receive. Dua-dua. Tak. S tak dua kan. Okay kalau error uh, successful uh, integer shutdown ni uh, kan shut sama dengan shutdown so akan return kosong shut akan jadi kosong. Otherwise return negative one lah. So ada error juga. Uh, okay ada error return uh, indicate error no kan. No. Ah Tadi saya target Patutnya ada set kan. So kat sini kita ada yang selalu pakai adalah get sort of. Dengan set sort of. Okay untuk get and set uh, option on socket. Alright. So sama dia punya parameter. Dua-dua untuk get sort of dan set sort of. Ada socket. Second parameter level. Third parameter op name. Option name. Okay. Uh, kemudian ada void untuk op world, op value, okay, dan last adalah length, right, itu sama. So description get set up and set set up manipulate the option associated with the socket. Options may exist at multiple protocol levels. They are always present at the up uppermost uh, socket level when manipulating a socket option. The level at which the option reside and the level the name of the option must be specified. Okay, macam mana kita nak uh, nak try guna option ni? Kita boleh manipulate option at the socket level. Okay, contohnya level is specified as sol socket. Dekat level ni, letak sol underscore socket. Kan? So, manipulate option uh, at any other level, the protocol number of the appropriate protocol controlling the option is supply. So, parameter of world pula dengan of line lah, are used to assess option value for set of op. Kalau untuk get sort of, get sort of, uh, they identify a buffer which in which the value for the requested option uh, to be written. For get sort of, op length is a value result parameter initially containing the size of the buffer appointed to the uh, to buy op value kan, op world. And modify on return to indicate the actual size of the value return if no option value is to be supplied 
a return of wall may be null. Okay. Uh, Opnim lah adalah untuk any specified option are passed uninterpreted to the appropriate protocol modules for interpretation. So the include file contain uh, C socket dot H contain definition for socket level option. Okay. Uh, most socket level option utilize an inter integer parameter for over. For set so op, the parameter should be non-zero to enable a boolean option or zero if the option is to be stable. Untuk return value on success, zero is written. On error, negative one is written and error number is set appropriately. Okay. Ni error-error macam tadi juga ada. Ebet, F, Efort, Inval, No, Protocol, No, Sock. No, kan? Kita nak set Sock Up dengan Get Sock Up. Kita ada uh, set, so, set Host Name dengan Get Host Name. Untuk apa ni? Untuk uh, System Call. Untuk ni kita panggil System Call lah. Function ni kita panggil system call. Ni function ni. Ada kurungan ni panggil function kan. Okay. So nama lain kita panggil system call. So I used to access or to charge the host name of the current processor. So get host name system call return a now terminated host name. Set earlier by set host name. In the array name that has a length of length. But so dia ada dua saja parameter kan. Uh, uh, untuk get host name dengan set host name. Okay, nama dengan uh, length kan. Oh, eh, tengok dia punya dalam uh, universal standard kan. Uh, dia bukan dalam type sys uh, socket ni. Yang lain dalam sys socket dot h kan. Uh, sys socket dot h sebelum ni. Yang ni dalam uh, universal standard dot h. Uni standard. Uni standard. Uh, university lah. University standard dot h kan. Okay, return value 0 sama dengan uh, success, negative 1 return. Kan? Uh, that's why kalau kita buat if get host name, so kalau kata kosong, uh, kita ambil result dekat else. Kan? Ataupun if no, maksudnya kosong lah kan? If no, false lah. False adalah success. Kalau negative 1, ada error. Uh, error kita nak tengok lah, effort ke, invalid ke. I perm ke perm ni apa uh, for set host ni the caller did not have the cap system admin capability kan iya ok uh, yang ni get host by address dengan uh, set host by address sepatutnya uh, satu get satu set lah uh, get host by address uh, sorry sorry Uh, ni dua-dua get, get host by address dengan get host by by name. So, saya salah ni. Dia punya uh, library dia tak sama lah. Header dia tak sama. Satu dekat netdb.h, satu lagi dekat syssocket.h. Macam yang sama depan tadi kan. Okay, kalau kita tengok get host by address dulu. This uh, function call, kata pun system call, returns a structure of the type of n for the given host address of length and address type. Okay. So very address type are AF underscore INET dengan AF underscore INET 6 untuk uh, PB66. Okay. The host address argument is a pointer to a struct of a type depending on the address type. For example, a struct in address properly obtained via a call to INET address for address type AF INET. Okay, the get host by name function returns in structure of type host name for the given host name. Here name is either a host name or an IPv4 address in standard not dot notation uh, dot 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 or an IPv6 address in colon and possibly dot notation. Kalau kata IPv4 dot dot 192.168 dot something dot something. IPv6 pakai colon ataupun titik tindih kan. Get host by name and get host by address function return the host and structure. And now pointer if an error occur on error the h underscore error number variable host. On error number when non-null the return value may point at static data. 
Banyak ni the variable h on can be have the following value. So nama dia sama h underscore error. No kan. So host not found. Ha, dia punya option. So error saja. No address ataupun no data. No recovery or try again. Try underscore again. Okay try underscore again. A temporary error occur on a authoritative, authoritative name server. Try again later. Okay, kita boleh juga get serve, uh, service lah. Service by port dengan ataupun service by name. Uh, service tu macam FTP ke, SSS ke, Telnet ke kan. Service kita lah. Kita nak tahu dia pakai service apa. Kan? Uh, boleh buat MMAP sendiri lah ni pandai kan. So, dua-dua pakai netdb.h. Dia punya library adalah netdb.h. Alright, so dia punya parameter ada dua je. Dua-dua ada dua. Satu untuk name dengan protocol. Satu lagi port number dengan protocol. Kan? Kalau by name, get server by name, nama lah. Kan FTP. Uh, kalau get server by port, uh, tak je 21 port number kan. The get server by name function returns a server structure for the line from ETC service. Nah, ni kena cari dalam uh, unit kamu. It is underscore ETC service. More space slash ETC slash services that match the service name using protocol. Uh, protocol. If protocol is null, any protocol will be match. Uh, boleh juga letak kosong. Eh? Boleh juga kosong, dia akan match semua. Okay, so get serve by port pun sama. Kalau letak kosong, dia akan match semua. So get serve by By port dengan by name, kita boleh letak kosong. Untuk protocol. So, untuk get serve by port function, returns a servant structure for the line that match the port uh, given in network by order using protocol. If protocol announced, macam saya uh, macam saya cakap tadi, any protocol will be match. So, return value the get serve by name and get serve by port, uh, port function return the servant structure. Dia akan bagi keluarkan servant structure. Ataupun null pointer if an error occur or the end of file is reached. Lagi lagi. So untuk function, uh, socket function. Selain daripada socket, listen, bind. Kita pakai pakaian tu kan. Okay. So dia ada lagi untuk lain-lain. Uh, to advance kita ada out of band. Uh, sebelum kita tengok kan socket blocking ke non blocking, uh, ada non blocking. Ada writing server for multi home nodes, timing out a socket connect, data framing. Uh, data framing ni nak tengok TCP ke UDP kan. Okay, connectionless and connected datagram. Connectionless kita tahu kan. Apa dia? UDP kan? Uh, macam mana kita nak buat connected datagram socket? Kan? And timing out uh, a read or write protocol, uh, operation. Protocol agreement for socket identifying service port and protocol. Uh, Oban ni maksudnya dia akan buat satu lagi uh, communication selain daripada kita yang tu. Tapi dia kecil je. Dia untuk nak hantar flag saja, Alright? So dia akan keluar jadi dua lah buat dua. It's a stream socket abstraction that creates the concept of a dual stream for communication over a pair of socket. Uh, dia, 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 dia bercakap tu pakai dua channel lah. Dan satu untuk out of band. Okay, this secondary stream is logically independent stream of data that can be used for signally outside of the transfer of regular data. As the regular data stream and the OOB data stream are independent, the socket API must provide a way for the application to specify which of the stream should be manipulated. So the specification is provided through the message underscore OOB flag or the send receive or send to receive from socket API function. Kalau uh, nak clear, kamu boleh baca dekat dalam buku teks. Dia sikit-sikit je dalam apa nama ini. Buku teks kamu saya bagi ke mana? Hmm. Ada kan? Banyak buku tak bagi kan?
So, buka pakai ni. Pakai ni susah lah. So, kena download dulu. Dah belum. Ha? Kali download dua kan? Mungkin nak telefon. Satu je. Satu untuk dah. Satu untuk dia temporary download kan. Tak faham. Faham. Disable. Set sort of. Set sort. Tak bisa. Oh ni set tu ya Allah ya Tuhan ya Tari. Sini. Pun terkena macam pelajaran juga kan. Get sort of. Set so up lah. Set so up. Hmm. Nah kan. Ada kan. Saya uh, cuak ada kan. Terus kat mana. Tak keluar-keluar kan. Kan. Nah, ada. Nampak? Okay. Uh, so dia lebih lebih banyak sikit lah. Daripada slide tak slide tak boleh masuk semua kan. Okay, first you define the socket of interest using the sort argument. Uh, next you must uh, define the level of the socket option that is being applied. The level argument can uh, be sold underscore socket for socket layer option. Kan? Uh, panjang lagi. Kan. Kan panjang. Ada contoh macam nak pakai kan. Ni contoh. Allah selalu pula. Kalau saya pakai ni dia terlajak. Oh dah terlajak dah. Kan. Selajak lah. Tak mau pakai. Kalau. Kalau ni slow je dia naik. Haa. Okey. Kan. Ada contoh. Macam nak pakai. So ada lagi lah kat sini kan. Ada banyak. Okey. Nak. So. Kau bergerak lah. Ha, contoh OAB ni kan. Okay, ada example uh, untuk nak buat OOB, dia akan buat dekat send dengan receive. Tapi, macam mana nak pakai, kita letak message underscore OOB dekat parameter yang ke, ke keempat. Kan, uh, yang ni dia panggil option, socket option. Okay, uh, send option. So, for the send function, the message OOB flag define that the data in buffer is out of band data. Conversely, with the receive function, the message will be flat specify that receive our band data be requested. Tapi kena belah sana pun kena ada jugalah. Kan? So, with the TCP protocol, only one byte of data may be transferred as out of band at time. Berapa bit ni? Satu byte ataupun lapan. Lapan bit saja. Besar tak? Kecil je kan? Uh, kalau nak hantar flat tu, muatlah. TCP utilize the agent mode described in the TCP header as its means to identify and transport out of band data between socket. Uh, the socket mark function which tell the application that the next data is to read is out of band data. Flag ni apa flag? 
Kita belajar pula kan. Tak ingat lah. Flat ni satu bit je. Ha, contohlah kita buat contoh lain. Katakanlah kita nak makan. Okay. So flat makan uh, dia akan tanda satu bit je. Sama ada zero ataupun one. Kalau zero makan tak? Zero tak makan. Satu baru makan kan. One baru makan. So kalau kita nak makan kita akan hantar flat. One dekat uh, makan flat. Kalau tak nak makan kosong. Contoh dia macam itulah. Uh, dia akan hantar benda benda-benda yang spesifik je sama ada true ataupun false. Alright. Ada lagi sort at mark function which tell the application that the net data to read is out of band. So kalau nak tahu uh, net data to read is out of band ada satu lagi function nama dia sort at mark. <coughs> Sini. Contoh ah. Uh, kita buat if else lah. Alright. Kalau kata dia adalah OOB, dia akan retrieve satu byte. Kalau dia bukan OOB, dia akan uh, kami uh, data biasa, bukan OOB. Okay, so fahamlah. Uh, if else, maka return one adalah OOB. Kalau tak, dia akan normal. Sikit-sikit kamu baca lah. Panjang kan? Next, kita tengok uh, non-blocking socket. Okay. Uh, by default, TCP socket are in blocking mode. For example, when you call receive to read from stream, control is return to your program until at last one byte of data is read from the remote side. So, dia takkan buat benda lain kecuali dia dapat balik apa yang dia nak. So, dipanggil blocking. Tapi kalau kata kita tak nak tunggu, kita panggil dia non-blocking. Non Alright, so kalau kata kita tunggu ni, the process of waiting for data to, to pay is refer to as blocking. Ha. Kalau kita tak nak tunggu macam kita gerak kamar sini kan. Kita tengah download. Uh, kalau kata download tak siap, mouse tak boleh gerak. So, dia is a blocking state. Tapi kalau kita download, tak habis lagi. Tapi mouse kita boleh gerak, kita dipanggil non-blocking state. Ha. Tu contoh. Analogi dia lah. Okay. Yeah. The same is true for the write API, the connect API, uh, etc. When you run them, the connection block until the operation is complete. Uh, kalau guna write dengan connect. Okay, macam mana kita nak set uh, non-blocking ni? Uh, it's possible to set a description so that it's placed in non-blocking mode. When placed in non-blocking mode, you never wait for operation to complete. This is an available tool if you need to switch between many different connected socket and want to ensure that none of them cause the program to lock up. If your call receive in non-blocking mode, it will return any data that the system has in its buffer for that socket. But it will not wait for that data. If the read buffer is empty, the system will return from receive immediately saying operation block. So non-blocking socket have a similar effect on the accept API. When you call accept the, and there isn't it already a client connecting to you, it will return operation would block to tell you that it cannot complete the accept without waiting. Okay, uh, contohnya kita pakai connect API is a little different. If you try the call connect is in non-blocking mode and the API cannot connect instantly, it will return the error code. Okay, kita try buat tapi akan ada return uh, return error. Uh, nama dia operation in progress. When you call connect again later, it may tell you operation already in progress to let you know that it's still trying to connect or it may give you a successful return code telling you that the connect has been made. Boleh buat non-blocking. Uh, ni cara lain untuk writing server for multi-home node. Multi-home node ni apa? Multi-home node is simply a device that contains contain more than one network interface and there, uh, therefore connect to more than one network. Satu PC kamu ada dua network card. Uh, tapi kalau kata kamu pakai satu wire, satu wireless tu, biasa kan? Kan? Tapi kamu pakai satu je kan? Tak pernah pakai dua-dua serentak. Ataupun wire dengan wireless kamu pakai dekat network yang sama. Betul tak? Cuba kamu wire pakai yang lain. Wireless pakai yang lain. Maksudnya kamu pakai dua-dua serentak. Boleh ke? 
tu susah nak buat kan. Satu data, uh, data dekat handset kan, tethering kan, kat hotspot. Satu lagi wired kamu cucuk dekat uh, lab kan. Boleh saya pakai dua-dua internet. Uh, susah kan. Okay, so kalau kita nak buat program macam tu. Uh, writing simple server formatting home node is commonly as, as a simple as single home node unless the server tracks the network interface differently. For example, if the server accessible over reach of the network connected to the network interfaces or only a subset of them. So a server accept connection over any interface from any connected network. So this is the default of most server application built today. So recall that the bind function is used to bind a socket to a given address. So that's why kita pakai bind. Lepas tu pada kita pakai bind kan. So uh, dia nak bind siap-siap maksudnya uh, kalau kata ada multiple network card, kita dah tahu dah. Kita dah cup dah kat mana satu. The application may specify the address of a given network address for a wide card for all interfaces. Alright. So kat sini kita pakai in address underscore any. So banyak mana pun kita boleh hantar kat mana-mana wired pun boleh, wired pun boleh ataupun kalau kamu ada dua network card kan ada dua wireless card okey so dia boleh bind server sock start start uh, ni sama lah bind kita bind so in address any adalah wired card address specify that any available network interface may be used to accept incoming connection so however that uh, the server wanted a touristic connection only to those from a specific interface So this common in device that consists of a WAN and LAN interface. For example, communication may be possible through the LAN interface ataupun internal local network. Uh, if the LAN interface had the IP address 192.168.111, the following code per, per, uh, yang ni boleh untuk buat restrict connection to only those from that interface. Okay, so kita buat apa nama in address underscore any yang uh, kita masukkan uh, 192.168.111 kita nak buat yang ini saja. Alright, so kita, kita masuk dalam internet underscore A2 network Aton ni kan. Kita belajar sebelum ni kan. Aton uh, N2 kan. Okay. Alright, kemudian kita boleh kita bind. Okay, the only difference here is that we bind the sin underscore address element to our sort address underscore in such a with a network by order of the address using internet underscore A to n aton kan n underscore aton okey tu mati notes sekarang kita nak buat timing out pula untuk soket connect okey timing out uh, soket connect call can sometimes be useful especially a system that do not support blocking function systematic consider the problem of trying to connect to many nodes at a given time so either a large number of thread must be created for each connect request or the connect call can be made non blocking so that many connects can be performed simultaneously by single thread so kita can be solved using port scanning all right port scanning ni apa is the name given the application that search the network for the node and they have application sitting the port of interest in which example we want to know the for our given subnet which node provide for the net server we know that the internet demon demon ni apa Uh, belajar demon pula kan. Bila kita run uh, service, uh, service kita tu dipanggil demon. Okay, so tenet service, tenet demon lah. So dia akan runkan uh, seat on, commonly seat on port 33. So if we connect to port 33 on all uh, available roads, we should be able to identify the location of all tenet demon based upon successful completion of the connect call. Uh, ini contohnya kita buat untuk uh, port 23 ataupun uh, telnet kan. Okay, Eston 23. S lah ingat lah untuk short ni adalah untuk uh, service ataupun uh, port number kan. Uh, service number ataupun port port number. Okay, uh, kalau name dia telnet lah. Eh? Alright, next kita pergi framing. So define the basic unit of information that are transported between two socket endpoints. In the case of TCP, information is transported as a stream and therefore no framing exists. For UDP, information is transported as datagram. Dah tahu kan? Uh, user, datagram, protocol, datagram lah. 
which mean that data is frame. So dalam UDP adalah frame, uh, TCP kita panggil packet kan. So UDP provide a message oriented protocol in which the unit of information when sent by the sender is what is received by the receiver. Tapi sama je uh, dalam frame tu pun ada packet kan. Even if more data was sent after the first segment of information, the receiver still receive the unit sent by the right call. So TCP being stream based, okay, operates uh, in a very different manner. If the sender writes three block of information, the receiver may receive all three block in a single read. This is because TCP is stream oriented and has no concept of framing. Itu juga kan, dia macam mana nak buat frame. Kalau nak buat TCP boleh ke? Right? Pakai UDP. Alright, kemudian kita ada connectionless the datagram. Tapi boleh tak kita nak buat dia macam TCP? Kita tak panggil dia connection oriented kan? Kita cuba buat macam connected datagram socket. Tapi kita buat connected. So by default datagram socket as connectionless. This useful feature of UDP means that there is no single peer connected to the datagram socket. And instead a packet can be directed to the peer with remote address information provided with the data. So this differ from TCP socket in that there is a single peer associated with the socket. For this reason, when referencing a TCP socket, there is no need to specify remote addressing because already been cached in the socket layer. So the telegram socket can be connected like stream socket but without the setup required uh, by a stream socket. For example, when a stream socket connect to a peer, there adalah ada handshake kan three way handshake kita panggil kan so takes place to synchronize the two ends of the connection so bagi salam dulu jawab salam patu acknowledge kan uh, uh, tanya patu dia tanya acknowledge kan because the telegram socket are message based there is no such synchronization ingat udp connectionless tak ada so therefore connection connectedness in the telegram socket simply means that there is no need to specify peer address Information with every write is cached in the state like stream socket. Timing out. Read or write information. Tadi timing out untuk apa? Socket kan? Ini kita coba timing out untuk uh, uh, read atau write information. Boleh juga kan? In some application, it's important for an application not to block on an I.O. operation but setting the socket to non-blocking means that CPU cycle are wasted in busy voting. To combat this problem, the select function can be used to time out the read or write operation. The select function can be used to time out after some duration of no data I.O. permitting the application to perform some other activity. Okay, untuk protocol argument for socket, recall that when we created a simple stream socket, the third argument was defined as zero. Kan, kalau zero, dia akan apply to all kan. So, this means that this means that the socket function would pick the default protocol for the given type, such as short string. In this case, the default protocol is TCP, but what is the actual protocol number for TCP? Kita letak zero je kan? Okay. So, boleh tengok dalam ETC protocol ataupun guna uh, get proto by name. Uh, function dia nama get proto by name. This function can be answered using the get proto by name function. So, this function can be used to return the actual protocol number associated with the given protocol string. Uh, macam dia akan keluarkan sebagai TCP. Let's look a simple lah. Dia pun uh, from the standard protocol for in the episode uh, ni contoh dia kita nak buat get proto by name. So kalau kata dia jumpa dia sama dengan ICMP dia akan print kat kita ICMP. ICMP ping lah. Uh, IGMP, TCP, UDP, RDP uh, kan. Kita cover TCP dengan UDP je kan. Ada RDP, IGMP Yeah, using get proto by name for socket function, get proto by name tadi kan, so uh, yang ni, get proto by name, so, kita buat lah if as banyak-banyak kan, if sama dengan uh, TCP, uh, dia akan print out TCP, kan? dia akan print dekat itu TCP. Kalau nak buat nombor pula, service port and protocol. Tadi protokol apa TCP, UDP, ICMP, RDP, IGMP kan. Ini nak tahu dia punya uh, service port. Each of the function returns a servant structure 
that defines not only the service name and port, but also the protocol by which it should be accessed and any aliases that exist for it. Some of more common uh, service functions are uh, servant, start servant, get served by name. Okay, function the number get served by name. So, dalam tu ada constant uh, char name untuk parameter one. Second parameter is adalah uh, proto, protocol lah. Which used to retrieve service information for a service given in the name of protocol CCB. Right, kita tengok contoh. Ada, ada selain daripada tu ada as name. Okay, ada as port dengan as protocol. So, tapi dalam uh, network tu post. Yang ni penting lah. Eh? Uh, kalau tak penting kita tak buat ni uh, dia akan jadi uh, common error ataupun kita panggil apa common-common hmm. uh, error tu kita panggil apa ada kat sini uh, pitfall kan so, soket programming pitfall masa ada lagi tak eh? ada tempat kita tengok pitfall tu right Oh. Common error pitfall Yang pertama yang kita tak letak uh, Histone and toh kan okay. So kita buat uh, uh, Protokol sama dengan Apa nama Servis protokol sama dengan 80 saja Tak buat uh, H to N S kan so, Ataupun IP address kita kan uh, My IP sama dengan 192.168.0 Uh, lukis lukis apa ya ni kan apa yang saya merapu ni kamu tak faham kan saya cakap kena ada uh, ganti apa nama ganti apa nama whiteboard kan so whiteboard so my pro my service uh, sama dengan Uh, apa nama Tenet berapa ni? 23 Kan uh, Dalam C ada tanda ni kan Dalam Python tak ada Ataupun my IP sama dengan 192.168.1.10 uh, Kalau macam ni kita dah pening Macam mana nak letak ni ke tak, tak letak Siapa tahu? Kalau letak dia jadi string lah kan? Macam ni kita tahu lah dia nombor kan? Betul tak? Nombor takkan nak letak string. Kan? Dia nombor takkan ada macam ni pula. Takkan dia tak letak kan? Kalau tak letak, mana dia boleh baca betul tak? So kita letak macam string. Okay, dua-dua. Salah ataupun pit, pitfall. So, siapa boleh tolong betulkan? Ramai-ramai ni. Come on guys. Kita mengantuk lah. Pagi-pagi dah mengantuk lah. Siapa yang masih online, uh, sila uh, bagi reaction live. Ada tak? Oh, semua tak online ni. Semua tunggu recording je. Ah, ada seorang. Dua. Oh, 17 ni macam nak tengok. Kan ada, ada, ada yang. Ada, ada skip tak apa. Thank you, thank you. Alright, saya takut saya cakap seorang-seorang ataupun Ataupun nama apa uh, Mikrofon saya uh, Hilang suara kan Ter Tekan mute nama mana tahu Sampai habis slide yeah. Okay, macam mana nak betulkan ni Saya letak yang tadilah L ke S L untuk I IP kan L untuk IP ha, So tenang Tak payah hmm, Kan Ada ni tak ha, Tak kisahlah kalau ada tak ada pun Kamu tengok dia punya Intact dia Kan ha, Kalau ada dah jadi 
uh, string kan tak kisahlah sebab kita akan convert dia jadi uh, uh, host to network short kan uh, okey So ini kita panggil dia sebagai socket programming pitfall. So tak banyak ni dalam 21 slide yang tadi banyak kan. So, the first uh, kita panggil possible danger falling to use function return value. So the socket API is the defective standard API for networking application development. So although the API is simple, new developers can experience some common problems. Okay, problem dia panggil pitfall lah. Yang pertama adalah ignoring return value. Okay, the first before is an obvious one but it's an error that new developers make most often. Common lah. If you ignore the return state of function, you may miss when they fail or partially succeed. This in return can propagate the error making it difficult to locate the source of the problem instead of ignoring status return. Capture and each check each of every one. Okay, kat sini apa error dia? Ha, kita nak buat status sama dengan negatif 1. Kan? Ha, kita panggil dia sebagai fail lah. Sebab kita tahu dia negatif 1 kan? Ha, kalau sebab tu yang kalau kata S. Ha, dia akan uh, succeed. Selain tu betul ada succeed lah. Betul ke? Ha, ni adalah kita panggil pick 4 tu. Kita terlepas value. Kan? Untuk success. Kita kena buat if S. Sama dengan, status sama dengan ko, kosong. Kemudian S satu lagi yang ha, kita tak tahu apa punca dia. Ha, kita nampak if S, uh, status sama dengan kosong kan. Okay. So, sample one is for a function snippet that perform a socket send sending data through a socket. So, the error status the function is captured and tested but the example ignore a feature send in non-blocking mode. So, enable by the message down with don't wait uh, flag. Uh, ni ada kaitan dengan non-blocking. So kita kena pakai uh, message underscore don't, don't wait. Three classes of return value are possible from the set API. Kan? Uh, sebenarnya ada tiga. Success kalau dia return zero. Sebab tu saya kata kena letak if else status sama dengan zero. Baru kita consider as zero. Bukan else semua adalah uh, success. Kan? Okay. Uh, sebab kita dah buat if sama dengan negatif satu kan. Alright. So kalau tak dia akan return character. Sebenarnya dia boleh return character could be Q. Uh, in the call the number character sent is the final return value. Uh, dia tak semestinya keluar kosong dengan negatif satu je. Ada lain lagi. Okay. Because of the non-blocking nature of the message don't wait variant of send. The call returns after sending all some or none of data. So keadaan ini berlaku bila kita buat non-blocking uh, mode. Kita guna message underscore down. Wait. Kalau tak buat ni. Dia keluar dua je lah. Negatif satu. Kosong. Negatif satu. Kosong. Kan. Kosong. Negatif satu. Kalau kita keluar. Buatkan message down wait. Dia akan keluar yang ketiga ni. Tak semestinya kosong. Tak semestinya. Negatif one. Right. So. Ignoring the return setup. Here would result in an incomplete send and Subsequent loss of data. Semua ada lima. So. Pick four yang kedua adalah. Fear socket closure. Ada banyak lagi. So yang dalam slide ni ambil lima je. Point yang kedua adalah peer socket closure. Nak close tak mau close kan. One other interesting aspect of Unix is that you can view almost everything as a file. Unix is best. Semua file. Kita boleh configure kan. File dan cell directory, pipe, device and socket are treated as file. This is an over abstraction and means the collective set of API can be used over a wide range of device type. Contohnya kalau kamu run MySQL dalam Linux ataupun FreeBSD kan. Tiba-tiba dia punya soket dia hilang. Sebenarnya file dia hilang. Kan file soket tu hilang. So kamu nak kena uh, up balik kan. Uh, baru dia boleh hidupkan soket. Soket tak ada tak boleh. Kan. Uh, paling senang uh, install, install balik lah. Kan. Alright, so this is an over observation that means that the collective set of API can be used over a wide range of device type. So consider the read API function which reads some number of bytes from a file. The read function returns the number of bytes reads up to the maximum that you specify. Negative one on error zero if the end of file has been reached. Okay. Kalau dekat router, 
Router yang manage manage yang boleh mana pakai iOS Cisco iOS ke ke uh, dia pakai Linux ke pakai uh, Unix. Uh, aku kena mana checklah. Kan dia kena dia pakai Linux ke Unix ataupun dia compile baru nama lain. Kalau nama lain dia akan jadi macam Linux lah. Kan dia guna uh, base Unix tapi dia compile yang baru. So nama dia bukan Linux, bukan Unix. So dia, dia di kategori Linux light. Kan uh, macam Android lah. Android tu Linux ke tak? Kan dia compile uh, source code dia lebih kurang Linux tapi dia bukan Linux. Hmm. Orang politik tahu lah. Muka macam saya, suara macam saya tapi bukan saya kan. Sampai kat mana tadi? Okay, they consider the API function which read some number of byte from a file. The read function returns the number of byte read up to the maximum that you specify ataupun negative one on error. Zero is the end of the file has been reached. Okay, kena faham zero adalah end of file. If you read from a file and reach the end, indicate dry zero lines read, you would close the file and be done. So the same thing applies in socket but the semantic are little different. You perform a read on the socket and get a zero return that indicate that the peer uh, at the remote and the socket has called the, the closed API function. The indication is the same as the file read. So no more data can be read through the descriptor. Okay. Ini contoh dia. Kita ada if status read ni. So kita akan close. Betul tak? Okay. Kita akan close. The closure of the peer socket can be also be detected with the right API function. So kita kena gunakan uh, yang kita belajar sebelum ni guna signal pipe. Okay. If the signal is blocked, the right function will return a negative one and set error no to E to pipe. Okay. Before number tiga. Ada dua lagi ya. Tiga, empat, lima. So address in use error, you can use the bind API function to bind an address and interface and a port. Uh, to a socket endpoint in a server setting to restrict the interfaces from which incoming connection are possible from a client setting to restrict the interfaces interface that should be used for an outgoing connection. The most common use of bind is to the associate a port number with a address and use a wildcard address in address underscore any because kita nak pakai any network card kan which allow any interface to be used for incoming connection. Okay, the problem commonly encountered with bind is attempting to bind a port that's already in use. Ah, itu masalahnya. The pitfall is that to is that no active socket may exist but binding to the port is still disallowed. Nak connect balik tak boleh. Nak bind balik tak boleh. Sebab dia kata akan bagi error. Error port has been used. Kan alamak macam mana ni kan. Okay, so bind return in uh, error address in use is caused by the TCP socket time with state sebenarnya. So this state keep a socket around for two of four minutes after it close. So selepas dua ataupun lima minit, lima minit boleh baru boleh. Tapi kita dah nak pakai kan. Takkan tunggu lima minit. After the time with state has exited, the socket is removed and the address can be rebound without issue. So waiting for time with two minutes can be annoying. Uh, kan? Especially you are developing a socket server and you need to stop the server to make change and then restart again. So you can apply the so underscore reuse address. Ada cara dia kita pakai. Dekat set sort op kita pakai socket reuse address. <coughs> kita belajar dia set sort op kan. Ataupun nama dia socket option. So the socket such the the port can be reused immediately. Okay nanti tengok dekat example. To binding the end address call set sort op. Okay with the so underscore reuse address option. To enable address reuse. So set one untuk. Uh, ni ataupun zero to disable address use. <coughs> okay, kita panggil set so up. Kita nak pakai balik sebab dia ada error kan. Uh, nombor port telah diguna. Padahal kita yang guna tadi dan kita tutup dia time with state lah kan. <coughs> nak pakai balik nombor tu. Port 5000 kita nak pakai 5. Takkan tak-tak kali kita nak letak 5 satu pula kan. <coughs> kita set je. Integer red. Uh, dan integer that. Set so up. So. So. Underscore socket. Uh, dalam yang ketiga. Parameter ketiga. Sebut, socket. Underscore. Reuse. Address. So. Socket ni level socket yang kan. Kan. So. Socket ni level kan. Ini. Kita punya option kita. 
Betul. Okay, so parameter ke 4, 5 ni. Uh, on tak on kan. Uh, on dengan slash on. Integer ni kita set. Integer on tak on. Kan? On ni berapa? Satu ke kosong? Uh, kita set kosong. Uh, satu lah on. Satu kan. Okay, so jangan lupa yang ni. Uh, kita pakai hashtag 4500 kan. Okay. Uh, yang ni wildcard in address underscore any tadi kan. Okay, yang keempat. <coughs> uh, ni yang saya tunjuk tadi kan. Nah, notice mistake. Uh, sin underscore port sama dengan 80 je kan. So kita mana dia pergi. Ataupun in address uh, 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 apa nama. Uh, Anak underscore address ni betul lah kan. Kita boleh pakai stone tadi lah. Uh, tak mau pakai stone boleh pakai inet ada sebuah address tapi saya rasa ada benda absolute kita pakai L stone L kan so kita letak letak stone 80 yang tadi lah contoh tadi kan uh, ni kan uh. okey yang last frame assumption in TCP okey kita nak ingat ada TCP ni ada frame TCP ni ada frame okey TCP provides no framing which make it perfect for byte stream oriented protocol this is one the key difference between for TCP and UDP okay UDP is a message oriented protocol that preserves the boundaries of message between the sender and receiver TCP is stream based protocol that assume the data being communicated is unstructured as shown in figure one okay so figure one the tunjuk Uh, datagram UDP uh, kita pakai uh, frame kan ok so dia akan read uh, frame by frame maksudnya satu byte satu byte ok TCP dia read semua kan uh, dia ada buffer dua tu byte satu satu ni satu satu kan dia akan dia akan baca dua kali so kalau TCP dia baca dua kali uh, dia baca sekali je nampak tak Nampak tak? Ini dua kali dia punya. Highlighter pula dah. Pen lah. Okay, so kita set sama. Dua kali 100-100. TCP pun sama 100-100. Tapi untuk UDP nak baca kena dua kali jugalah. Nampak? Dua. Kan? Uh, so eh, ini kenapa sekali sebab dia boleh baca terus uh, dipanggil uh, no framing faham ok the top of figure 1 illustrated uh, UDP semua figure 1 kan ni semua figure 1 oh lah figure 5 pula kan <coughs> Uh, illustrated a UDP client and server the peer on the left perform two socket writes the 100 but is faham dah ani kita faham kita faham okay the same the same regularity dekat TCP layer betul so but in the case they just get 200 bytes kan tak tahu kenapa okay, TCP is the step as aggregated the two writes This aggression can occur in either the sender or receiver as so that okay it's important to note that the aggression may not occur We guarantee only order delivery on TCP guarantees only order delivery of the data. Okay, so this pitfall cause a difficulty for most developer. You want to reliability of TCP, but the framing aspect of UDP. Other than switching to different uh, transmission protocols, such as other than the name of the stream transmission control protocol, number STCP, tak pernah belajar kan? It's up to the application layer to implement the buffering and segmenting functionality. 